Hey, what's up? This is Pat and welcome to episode three of SPI TV. In this video, I'm gonna give you my five favorite productivity tools that are gonna help you get more work done faster, better, and stronger. Here we go. Okay, so this first tool I wanna share with you is called ByWord and this is distraction-free writing. This is essentially a word processor and this is on a Mac computer. Now there is a Windows version of this called Om Writer, and there's a lot of different distraction-free word processors out there, but the purpose is, you know, really just to get rid of all the other things that might stop you from doing what you should be doing when you're writing, which is focusing on your words and taking that stuff in your brain and putting it here into text for your blog post, for your book writing, whatever. But for blog posts specifically, actually for anybody on any word processor, even if you use WordPress as a place to edit your blog post, which I wouldn't recommend because sometimes it crashes, it could be finicky. That's why I would recommend using a third party program, especially something like this, which is distraction free. Again, this is called ByWord, B-Y-W-O-R-D. But I do want to give you a tip, which is related to episode one of SPI TV, which was about how to write a super fast first draft for your book. And in that, I shared a strategy using post-it notes to brainstorm and mind map your next book. And you can do the same thing. You can use post-it notes to take all that information in your brain, put it down on your desk or on your table and start to organize and pull out those post-it notes and put them into sections and groups, which then become in a book, they would be your chapters and sub chapters and case studies and all those things in a blog post, essentially the same thing. So different sections and talking points and conclusions and calls to actions and ideas for, for titles and things like that. So after you mass, or after you use your mind map and brainstorm using the post-it note method like shown in episode one, you can do the following, which is my workflow for getting through a blog post super fast. Now it's not because I type faster, but it's because I take a different approach using the transformation method. And what I mean by that is you're essentially thinking about how you can transform your audience with this particular topic that you want to write about. So the first thing you wanna do is literally write down transformation and then write down how you want your audience to transform after reading this particular piece that you're writing. And the reason I love thinking about it this way, because when you really think about that, I mean, it's just a summary, right? You're just writing the summary of the post, the purpose. But when I think about the transformation that people have after reading it, that's much better because you're thinking about this in terms of how it's gonna help your audience. It's always that from your audience's perspective with your audience's best interest in mind. Not yours, but your audience's, which is who you're writing for, right? So think about the transformation that you want your audience to have after reading this post. This is gonna guide you in terms of what you're gonna write, what your support points are gonna be, what your case studies are gonna be, what your conclusion and your call to action, and uh, also your title. So think about that. That's the first thing you wanna run. That's the first exercise you should always do before you uh, write a blog post or even do a podcast episode. What's the transformation you want your audience to go through? So that's tip number one. After that, you actually wanna write down your support points. So support point uh, number one, support point number two and support point pop it, point number three and there might be more but it's always good to have three now when you have these different support points again thinking about the transformation in mind these are points that you need to make in order to convince somebody about this transformation so they might be case studies or experiments or examples or stories or anything, support points. Now within, if you have three, perfect. If you have more, that's fine. But here's a basic structure for the strength of each of those support points. There's a specific order that'll give you the most bang for your buck here. So the first support point should be the second best support point. The second support point should be the third best or the last. And then the third one is gonna be, of course, your first best or the best. And the reason for this is you want your worst example, your worst case study, story, whatever, to be sandwiched in the middle between the two best ones. And you always wanna end on a high note. You wanna end with the best thing. So that's the last thing people remember or the last thing they read before they get to that call to action. That's gonna best support your idea. The second best one is there to just keep them going. And once at that point, they're gonna to get to the end. But again, the intro and the title are very important. We'll talk about that in a second. But that those are your support points. And after that, then you can write, the conclusion, which will all relate. I mean, all of this 
it's hard to type and write, uh, say stuff at the same time. Conclusion and also call to action. And that's what you write out then. So yes, first your transformation, which is a summary, but again with your audience in mind. Then your support points in that particular order. And you would know that order based off of your brainstorming. And then your conclusion and your call to action. And then you can write the introduction. Again, this is important to put nearly last because it is one of the most important parts of your of your article. Once people click to read it, the introduction is the first thing they read, and it has to be great. But again, it's it's got to be convincing. It's got to keep them uh, going down the page, and that's all going to be based on the support points and your call to action. Again, keeping in mind what it is you want your audience to do after they read this. So the introduction goes there. And then finally, after all that, your title. And the title is the most important thing uh, of your post because that's what people see when they go to your website. And that's what people see when they're on social media, before they read any single words that you write on your post, they read the title. And so it's important for the title to be great. And this gives you an opportunity to write a whole bunch of things and think about this post and, and, and really craft it before you come up with that perfect title. And doing this all before the title is going to help you out. So that's how you can just go really quickly. I mean, much quicker than if you were to just start at the top through your blog post, and hopefully that'll help some of you. This is how I uh, approach my blog posts, and uh, if you don't do this, perhaps it might be a great experiment for you to try, or you might have your own uh, sort of method or workflow for going through a blog post. But over the years, over six years, this is what's worked best for me, and this is how I always approach my blog posts. So check that out. Okay, the next tool I wanna share with you is called Calendly, and this will help you literally take control of your time. I don't know if you've ever tried to schedule an interview or a meeting and then just that back and forth, those emails, are you free then? No, I'm not free then, but are you free here? No, actually I'm not free there. Well, what about next week? Blah, 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 blah. You go through all these emails, this back and forth, and then you either finally, after hours and wasted transition time, find a meeting time that works for both of you, or you just don't do the meeting at all or the interview, and it's just really frustrating. After using Calendly for the last couple months, it has really changed my life and it has changed the life of my assistant too because she knows when certain things happen. And the way to approach building your calendar out, especially on a tool like Calendly, and there are a lot of other tools just like it, but I like the interface for both the user and the person you're sharing your calendar link with on Calendly the best. I did a bunch of research on all the different kinds and I like this one the best. Um, but the really cool thing and the way you want to approach this is you have specific days and times where specific things happen. Specific events happen at certain times on certain days. So uh, just, I mean, as you're here on my dashboard and so you're seeing on Tuesday, this Tuesday, I have a bunch of things lined up. And that's because Tuesdays are my interview days. And so when I send people a link to schedule an interview, Calendly knows to only show them Tuesday is available whenever there is time available on Tuesdays. And what's really cool is I can sync this up to my Google Calendar. So it knows to not schedule me over something that I already have scheduled. Or when I schedule something here myself, it puts it in my Google Calendar for me, which is really cool. So I'm going to actually show you what it's like to uh, to create a new event and how you should approach this. So I'm going to go to my event type settings and you'll see different types of events here. You'll see interviews for food trucker, uh, for smart passive income, a 60 minute meeting, a 30 minute meeting, and a 15 minute meeting. And each one of these event types has a specific link that you can share. So if you're going to schedule a 15 minute meeting, you can just give them the link for the 15 minute meeting and they'll see a whole list of openings and they can choose the one that works for them and that's based off of when you are open. Again, this is taking time under your control and not giving anybody else a chance to tell you when you're supposed to do something. You're you're taking control and that's so important. So I'm going to walk through how to create an event type really quick with you and I'm going to create a new podcast actually. So let's do Pat's new podcast interview and we'll make this uh, one hour long. Whoops. All right, uh, Pat's new podcast. Event link, I'll just put uh, calendly.com slash Pat Flynn slash Pat's, or let's just do new podcast. Uh, I'm gonna make the event color green. That doesn't matter, but if you have a bunch, it might help you. Availability, now this is where it gets really cool. Now, I only wanna conduct interviews for this brand new podcast of mine. I don't even know what it is. This, again, this is just hypothetical. Not on the weekends, but let's say Monday, it's on, but I want to edit the specific time. So let's do Monday from, um, you know, let's have it start every th uh, 
30 minutes. So I'm not starting it sort of in the middle of an hour, um, except for at the half hour, of course. So let's start it at 1 p.m. And let's end at 5 p.m. And let's apply this to actually Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday only. So done. So now Tuesday and Wednesday has been updated. You can see between 1 and 5 p.m. for both of those days. And then I'm going to turn Thursday off and Friday off. So I'm only conducting interviews for the new podcast I have between Monday and Wednesday from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. So when I give people this link, the special link that I created, or my assistant does it for me, again, catlinley.com slash patflin slash new podcast, they'll only see what's available in my schedule on those days in those times. I'm going to go here and say how far into the future can schedules be, uh, can events be scheduled? Let's do 60 days. Um, custom questions. This is really cool. So phone number. No, I don't want people's phone numbers. Custom question. Skype contact or Skype username is probably the best way to say that. Skype username required. Single line. Yes. Add a custom question. Any special requirements? And we'll just make that multi-line, but also optional. Add. Uh, custom links, um, no email notifications. You can change the way uh, it gets, you know, the, you can set reminders and things like that or advanced settings. I don't want this to be public. Um, I just want uh, one invitee, so I'm going to keep that. And uh, let's see, buffer time before or after, no. Um, display button to schedule another event, no. And I'm going to save changes. All right, it has been successfully saved. So now if I go to com slash new or sorry pat flynn slash new podcast you'll see what my calendar looks like if you get to select or you, you'll see what it's like if you're going to schedule uh this particular interview with me so i don't have any openings till february the 25th because those times are already booked in my calendar which is cool so someone can go here but maybe they're not good for wednesday maybe they want a monday or something um so okay Here's the first Monday available, Monday, March 9th. So I'm going to click that, and there are two start times available. Uh, let's do 4 p.m. Confirm. Then it's going to ask me what those questions were. Uh, okay, Skype username, Pat Flynn 3, special requirements, nope. And schedule event. And what's cool is the people who sign up on the other end, they're going to see this information, uh, and they'll be able to quickly add it to their iCalendar or Google or Outlook. And then you're good. Man, this is super easy, but what's really cool is this automatically puts it in my schedule as well. So if I go to my Google Calendar, again, this is March 9th, 4 p.m. I'm going to go to my Google Calendar, and I'm going to, uh, let's see, go to the correct calendar. And I'm going to head over to March and click March 9th, and here we go. If I click this event, you'll see Pat's new podcast interview, 4 to 5 p.m. It is done with... Uh, Pat and Pat at smartpassiveincome.com. The username is Pat Flynn 3. Any special requirements? Nope. All in there already. So that when I go into a podcast interview, it's here in the calendar. I click the calendar event and there it is with the Skype username. So I don't have to go and dig it out. It's there already. Boom. It's been a life changer for me and it could be for you too. So that's calendly.com. The next tool I wanted to introduce you to is called Trello. And this is a project management tool. And it's how both myself and my team members are able to understand what projects we're working on and within those projects, who's doing what and when things should be done. And this is really cool because it sort of takes the place of a physical folder system that I had, literally physical you know, manila folders with pieces of paper sharing every single task of what needed to be done in order for that project to be completed. This takes that place and it's better because I can have my team members there, I can assign certain team members to different tasks, they can all converse with each other and there's due dates and checklists can be added onto different tasks as well to make sure things get done. And it's just, it's. I mean, a lot of you wonder how I'm able to do so many things at the same time, and Trello is definitely it. I'm gonna give you a quick tour of how I use it. Um, now, there's a lot in here, and I would. I don't want you to be overwhelmed. Um, there are also a lot of other great project management tools out there that I've all used. Actually, Basecamp is is one that comes to mind, and Asana, and I know a lot of you use those too. And if you, as long as you're using something like this to manage your projects, so you can understand what has to be done next, who's doing that thing next, and when, 
then you're set. So, you know, Trello may be for you, maybe not, but it is working for me and my team definitely. And I'll give you a quick tour and, you know, show you how you might be able to use this right away for what you're doing right now. So on he the dashboard here, you'll see these boards and all these boards uh, consist of as different lists and tasks. And within those things, you can have different assignments. So it's really easy to once you sort of get into it. And I'm gonna show you an example in just a sec. Uh, I mean, there's so many things in here. I mean, I'll give you an insider look really quick at the inner workings of the smart podcast player. Now, don't be overwhelmed by what you see here. All this is, is sort of internal stuff, but I mean, just to give you an idea, uh, from left to right here, the left here is the backlog, which means these are just all the ideas that us as a team and also the users of the Smart Podcast Player, you can find that at smartpodcastplayer.com actually, but all the ideas that anyone has ever had for adding additional features to this podcast player are put here in this backlog. And then my team and I go in once a week and take all those new suggestions and prioritize them. And we can easily just add new cards here for new suggestions and we can we can uh, prioritize one over the other, for example. And then what happens is the developers come in and they pick the top one whenever it's time to work on a new feature and they drag and drop it over here and they say, okay, we're gonna work on that. And that's how everybody on the team knows that that's what we're working on right now. And again, it just keeps the developers focused on that one thing. And you can see they're working on a couple other things right now, uh, which is really cool. We're actually working on a free trial version right now, which is uh, proven to be pretty challenging, but we're really excited about that. Uh, and then here, UI UX, that's sort of design stuff. So if anything needs any design work done first, it goes over here and then Dustin, my UX guy, takes care of it. Uh, and then things that are sort of, um, you know, ready to go or put over here, done and ready for launch here. And then there's some checklists here for the uh, any testing that needs to be done. This is sort of a higher level version of a board here used in, in my team. But let me show you one uh, that, that might be a little bit easier to, to, for, to use for you. I'm not gonna create it from scratch actually. So this is blog posts. We all write blog posts or I know a lot of us do or maybe it's podcast episodes. But here's how you can use this to your advantage. So I'm gonna add a list here and this could be blog post ideas and then under here you can add different cards for example um, five ways to use Trello for super fast productivity add I'm gonna add another one um, the worst night of my life insert joke here uh, and I'll add one more fishing with my dad is awesome Again, this isn't for uh, this isn't for real. Like that would be weird if I had all those things on the blog. Oh, maybe not. But anyway, the next list you can add would maybe be working or maybe doing research. Research on those certain things. And then I'm gonna add another list that might be uh, currently writing. Uh, ready for editing and done and ready to publish. You can see where I'm going here, and publish. So let's say for example, I have this idea for a blog post, five ways to use Trello for super fast productivity. I can actually, actually click on this card and open it up and then I can write comments on it. I can add certain people or attachments to it. Um, maybe I wanna add some screenshots and I'll give you a quick tip in just a second in my next tool to show you how to make, uh, just take really quick, easy screenshots. Uh, but anyway, I can uh, edit the description in case this is some, something somebody else needs to read. I can label it, I can add members to it. I can add a due date, I can add, add checklists. So for example, let's do uh, the five items. So I can do item one, item two, item three, item four, again, because this is five ways, and item five. And then once I find these things, I can check them off and then it gives me 20% done, 40% done, 60% done. If I close this, you can see here three out of five done. So I know this isn't ready, ready yet, for example. Or maybe what I can do is if I have somebody on my team that's doing the research, I can move this card over here and then I and the whole team understands that this is the card that's being researched right now. Um, and if you have one person on the team, maybe you can just set the rule that, okay, there's only one that you should be researching on um, before it goes into currently writing. Or maybe it's just you and that's the one you're researching. And then after you're done with that, you can add it to currently writing. Maybe somebody else on your team is researching the worst night of your life. 
And then from there, after you're done writing, you can head it uh, over to editing and then you can maybe assign it at that point to somebody on your team. Uh, let's go Matt. Oh, well, this is a private board, so I don't have any other team members in here, but you can assign it to your editor who can then edit and then uh, you can put a due date to that at which point this person would take it and put it in the done and ready to publish. And that's where you can go in. You would have these bank of articles that you can then publish and boom, done. And then over time, this list will grow and you just get super motivated because you see everything that you've accomplished. You can always go back into these to see sort of what research you did, if, if any, or who was assigned to something. I mean, it just makes it super easy to, do, to go through this workflow. And then you or anybody in your team can just add another idea and then just keep going down this line. And then, man, it just becomes so productive in terms of the workflow here. It's just crazy. So that's how you can use Trello right now. And there are a lot of other ways you can use it, but I could spend an hour talking about it. But I just wanted to introduce the tool to you and give you a quick tip on how you might be able to benefit from it right now. One of the most helpful tools I've ever used in my business, and I still use almost every day now, is called Dropbox. And a lot of you probably already have Dropbox. Now I'm gonna share a quick tip for you that even if you have Dropbox, you might not know yet that has been really helpful for me. However, if you don't have Dropbox, you have to get it. I mean, it's just the most helpful tool you can use especially if you have team members because you can easily swap files, images, documents using the cloud storage that Dropbox gives you. And you can sign up for free too, which is really cool. Now, if you sign up for free through my link, if you go to smartpassiveincome.com slash Dropbox, you'll get some extra space, I believe. And I also get some extra space as well for going through that link. That's kind of how they've been able to grow so fast. It's a really smart business move. Uh, but you don't have to go through that. You can just go to dropbox.com too if you just like, totally up to you. But after you get signed up with that, what you can do is you will easily are able to swap files and, 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 and you know upload stuff to the cloud and be able to access the, uh, that from anywhere, from any device. It's just so easy to use from videos to images to documents. It's just, I have a, most of my most important files on my own Dropbox account and you should too because if your computer crashes, at least you have those there. And if you ever wanted to share files with you, I mean, I share movie files and I share mp3 files for my podcast with my assistants almost every single day i mean that's how they get access to them so they can then take them edit them and then put them into my podcast so dropbox has just been incredibly helpful for that now the tip i wanted to share with you is involving screenshots now i take a lot of screenshots and you might too and it's a great thing to potentially add you know an image onto social media or if you ever wanted to share an image with one of your colleagues really quick maybe you're talking to them on skype and you just really wanted to show their uh, something on your screen with them really quick you can take a screenshot and share that with them now if you hook up dropbox to capture your screenshots those screenshots immediately get copied to your clipboard in the link to that dropbox folder where your screenshots get dumped so in other words, when you take a screenshot, if you connect it to Dropbox, and I'll show you how to do that in just a minute, it puts all those screenshots into a Dropbox folder that's special just for those screenshots. And then when you do that, you have a link already copied to your clipboard that you can paste into your instant message, into Twitter, or wherever you wanna share that image. It's just super cool. So to set this up, what you wanna do is you wanna go to your top menu here, uh, or wherever the desktop icon is, click on Dropbox, and then you want to go to this uh, little cog icon or the settings icon and go to preferences. And then what you want to do is go to import. And then at the bottom here, make sure this is clicked on share screenshots using Dropbox. Now, if you take a screenshot and you have Dropbox, you might have seen a prompt like this come up for the first time. And maybe you have it enabled already. But if not, this is really helpful. So make sure that's on. Uh, it's on for me already. And I'm going to give you an example. So let's say I just take a screenshot of um, of this the front of Dropbox. So I'm just gonna take a screenshot and I'm doing this by holding Command, Shift, and Four. And I'm able to kind of move this around. If I wanted to even move the corner of this box, which it can't move right now, that's kind of the pivot point where I started, I can hold Shift. And if I hold Shift down at all at the same time, still holding all four of those buttons, uh, I can move this around and maybe I can just uh, take a screenshot of this image here, which is just really cool. So again, on a Mac, it's Command Shift Four, and I believe Dropbox gives you instructions on uh, if you're on a PC how to take a screenshot like this just on the fly. But again, this is how you would do it, uh, and then hold Spacebar down. In addition to that, if you ever want to move that box around, and then I'm just going to let go, and then in my ears I heard a camera sound, and I saw a little pop up that said sharing screenshot, and I have a link available. So now if I actually go to this link. Again, that was automat automatically, um, you know, just put into my clipboard and hit enter. There's that screenshot. 
super cool. And let me take a bigger screenshot of my whole desktop and then put it in here. Now it's still uploading. It has to upload to the server really quick. And then it's a little bigger, so it's going to take some time. And there it is. So that's super cool. So that's how you can take quick, easy screenshots, have them saved so you don't ever lose them and they don't just become junk on your desktop and you'll be able to easily share them to those who need it. All right, and the last tool I wanna share with you is called self-control. Now, I know a lot of you, like myself, get super distracted by certain websites that you might visit, and they're dangerous because you can go down that rabbit hole and be in there for hours and come out of it like, what just happened? I just wasted all of that time. And you probably have an idea of what those sites are. Using this tool, self-control, and there's also, uh, this is a Mac um, application, and you can download it from selfcontrolapp.com. There's also a... Windows version available, uh, which is uh, a different company, but you can go to stopprocrastinatingapp.com. But anyway, I have self-control installed and I uh, deleted all my websites because I wanted to show you how to add them in. So what it is, is after you install it, you get this little app that shows up and you can put domains into your domain blacklist. So I'm going to hit plus. I'm going to put Facebook is a big one. Uh, Facebook.com. I'm going to put twitter.com. I'm going to put BuzzFeed. That's a huge one that a lot of people waste time on. Uh, and then you can even import this list and give it to other people. Or you might be able to find one from somebody else, actually, if they use this. This is a fairly popular tool. You might use it already. And if you do, I'd love to, to see how uh, it's been for you because I've just recently started using it. But it's totally changed because that's just it's just totally changed my productivity because – you know, I actually caught myself going to sites without me even knowing it. You know, it's sort of just a habit. Uh, and so this has been really, really good. Um, and then to start the self-control time sequence, what you do is you hit start. You can adjust the minutes here uh, to um, see how much time you want to not be able to access these sites. So if I were to go 15 minutes and hit start, I would not be able to access Facebook, Twitter, or BuzzFeed. And what's really cool is even if I turn off my com computer and delete the application, it would still go to when you hit the time setting. So I wouldn't be able to access any of these sites for 15 minutes. So I'm gonna do that right now. Start, password, okay, loading. And now those sites are blacklisted. So let's see what happens when I go to facebook.com. Nothing. So nothing's happening. Let's just make sure, oh, yep, web page not available. Now let's just double check to make sure that uh, the internet still is working. Cool. Twitter.com, nope, not available. BuzzFeed, please, because I just need to go there because the next article about the 26 things that remind me of my childhood is so important, no, okay. So again, those apps are <laughs> self-control app and then also a stop procrastinating app. And I hope those tools will be helpful for you as much as they have been for me. Now, if you have any tools you'd like to share with the SPI community, feel free to leave a comment. If you're watching this on YouTube, leave a comment below. I'm gonna read every single one of them because I'm always looking for better tools to help me become more productive. If you are watching this on iTunes, head on over to watchspi.tv and you'll find this episode there. Again, this is episode number three and you can leave a comment there on the blog. Or if you're watching this on the blog, leave a comment right there below. And I look forward to looking at your tools and the things that you have to share with the community. Thank you so much. Make sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next episode of SPI TV.